regular season game. I had that game down in Clemson, and I'll tell you, he lit them up down at Little John. Here's Phyllis making a move. Grant was there. He picks up the personal foul, so the highest scoring tandem in the conference each have a foul apiece in Bias and Brand. You see, Maryland's zone is not a real aggressive zone. Billis with a strong move to the basket, but Duke is able, without very many passes, to throw the ball inside that zone. Maryland is going to have to pick up their pressure in that zone if they're going to have any success at all with it. An improved shooter from the free throw line this season is Junior from Rolling Hills, California. Worked on it diligently during the offseason and shot almost 69% during the regular season. He hits both ends here, and the new Blue Devils had forged into a 6-6 lockup. 17-20 remaining here in the first half. Good pressure by Dawkins. Not trying to steal the ball, really, but he knocked it away right there. Branch is at a disadvantage in the midcourt area against Johnny Dawkins. Whereas when Branch can get him down inside, then Branch has the advantage. Well, look at Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski, who has certainly brought about a strong resurgence of basketball at that campus in Durham. Here's Gatlin to the baseline, head picking, gets off the jump shot, and the roll, the Bryant it back through. He went right up over Dan Bahar and slammed that ball in. And Mike Krzyzewski is up, and he is really mad. He's claiming that uh, Bias was on Dan Bahar's back by that slam, 8-6 to six over Duke. Maryland now in a man-to-man, Marty. Hawkins keeps his dribble alive, finds Amaker, matched up against the taller Gatlin, tried to go inside, Mahar picks up the loose ball. I think he it was a good pass to Mahar, except he wasn't trying to throw the ball to him, rolled across the floor. Amaker, Dawkins, takes it inside, double shot, somebody got a hand on it, and Bias tried to save it at the end line, and did. Maryland ball, Allery says, I thought we should have gotten possession of it as a bolt for going after it. And Maryland will come up with the lead and the basketball. The Turks lead the Blue Devils at 8-6. Duke stays in the man-to-man, -man, but as I mentioned, Marty, the pressure doesn't seem to be very strong. Got shot on the way. Good roll for Lenny Bias, and he has his second field goal. The man who last year was the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament MVP. A first team All Atlantic Coast Conference performer this season. So Maryland enjoys its biggest lead. In fact, the biggest to neither club in four, 10 seconds. Dawkins takes it inside, and he drew the foul from Tom Jones. Excellent screen for Johnny Dawkins. I think that was Dan Mahar in there setting that screen and able Dawkins to penetrate to the basket. That's where Dawkins is the most dangerous for the Blue Devils when he's penetrating because he can create so many opportunities. Three team fouls against the. Duke has yet to be whistled for one, and Dawkins, an excellent free throw shooter, 81%. Now, this is interesting. I've seen just about uh, everything I thought of the basketball game, but the Maryland students are behind the basket that Dawkins is shooting at, waving balloons. Didn't bother him a lick. He hit both ends, and Duke is four for four from the line. Timeout. 15, 53 to go, first half. Maryland leads Duke by two at 10 to 8. We'll return. Isn't it time you experience the outstanding total performance of the Mazda RX-7? Because only then can you feel the seemingly unending flow of power from its unique rotary engine and experience exceptional handling from its near-perfect weight distribution. Only then can you appreciate its aerodynamics at work. Only then will you understand why the RX-7 has become a legend in offering superior sports car value. Mazda RX-7. Experience it. Teamwork, the essential ingredient on any basketball team. The job each person must do if the team is to succeed. At Food Line, success depends on teamwork too. Each member of our team is trained to do a specific job well, whether it's cutting meat or putting groceries in your car. When you visit Food Line, you know everybody working together to help you save money on your groceries. That's the only way we know how to play the game. This drag race car requires the very best to be.
That's the story of the way things went between these two clubs during the regular season. Maryland in overtime went after being down by 14 at the half at College Park. And really, uh, the game in Durham was uh, really up for grabs until a late technical was called against Lefty Drizel uh, concerning uh, a technical that was whistled against Len Bias as a result of a collision between he and Danny Mahar. That turned the whole thing around and led Duke to the eight-point win. So these two ball clubs have pretty much played even up basketball against each other. And right now, two points separates them with Maryland in front, 10-8. For alley -oop. Bias could not handle it the first time around, so he just took it back up and stuck it in. Len Bias is such a great athlete. That was a bad pass, but he was able to control it and then get the ball up on the floor. Maryland now back into the zone. 2-3 zone. Maryland with that four-point lead again. Here's Allery maneuvering inside. And the rebound control by Lenny Bias. Len Bias put a lot of pressure on Jay Billis, forced him to change the shot. Here's a turnaround jump shot by Branch. He got nothing but that. A six for Bias, four apiece for Branch and Gatlin. And right now, lefty turns for cooking as they open up a lead of a half dozen, 14-8. Marty, I, I repeat, Duke just does not look like they're playing very hard for me. Mallory, a little bit long. Rebound, strong rebound inside by Maryland's Tom Jones. You saw the shooting early here. Maryland has put it up nine times. They've had seven hits. And they look to extend the lead to eight with a basket here. Lewis contact with Alley. Takes it to the hole. And he's going to get an extra one on that. I think there's going to be a foul against Mark Allery. He decides to bring his club over and discuss it as we take one more look at it. You can see the Duke players just standing around on defense. Nobody picked up Lewis as he drove to the basket. Allery, in trying to come over and help out, got the foul. Lewis with a dunk. Allery with a foul. Time out on the floor. Maryland leads by eight. And we'll be back after this from Bud. Me and the crew, we're taking this road across Alaska. Look at the last frontier, it's different. But when this road's finished, and it's on the map, we can say, we did that. It's for guys like T.J. Donahue that we make every Budweiser the best it can be. Beachwood aged and brewed with the kind of pride T.J. puts in. This exclusive ACC coverage is brought to you by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teller Productions. 14 minutes, 37 seconds, the time remaining here in the first half of this second quarterfinal game of the ACC tournament. So far, it has pretty much been all Maryland, as the score would indicate. That is uh, the current ranking of Mike Krzyzewski's Duke Ball Club, seventh in the Associated Press Poll, ninth in the UPI Poll. Duke has been ranked in the top ten for most of this 84-85 season, and... Uh, well, it should be. With a record of 21 and 6, they've had some big wins this season, but right now trying to get things together in the early going as Lewis completes a three-point play, and Maryland leads by nine. The Terps showing full-court pressure after the made free throw. We've got some substitutions in for Duke. King is in, Henderson in, Nestle's in. The entire starting front line for the Blue Devils is out. Here's a jumper off the baseline, and it's good. David Henderson does what he is supposed to do, and that's provide some instant offense. He averages double figures coming off the bench. He's really a spark plug for the Blue Devils. Lefty not liking any changes in his lineup. Uh, they're playing extremely well, leading 17-10 as Gatlin goes to work inside with a pass to Branch, and he missed one in close. I don't know whether Branch was upset over his inability to make the shot fall or the fact that he felt he was fouled and no whistle. Here's a contact off the ball involving Speedy Jones and David Henderson, and they get Henderson for the foul. Henderson trying to get position inside against the zone, gets called for the foul. Get a look here at Adrian Branch driving to the basket. I think he feels he was fouled by David Henderson as he went up and missed the dunk. Once again, Maryland with a very easy shot. Gatlin trying to beat him down the floor. They fly, bias. He runs into a traffic jam, and then was either David Henderson or King who commits the personal it was, foul. It was David Henderson who got the foul. That's two real quick fouls for Henderson. He hasn't been in that long. Marty Bias just blew by him along the baseline. And in Mike Krzyzewski's defensive concept, you're not supposed to give up that baseline. Duke really appears flat. And you can't play good, hard, aggressive, in-your-face defense like Duke needs to do if you're flat. You saw the newcomer to the Maryland lineup. Jeff Baxter has replaced Keith Gatlin in the backcourt. And Baxter handles the basketball. Duke now in a 2-3 zone on that out of 
bounds play. Nestle taking up a lot of room there in the middle. Baxter off to Adrian Branch. Maryland getting adjusted here in the zone. Branch goes on the high post with a jump shot that's a little bit long. Number of people touch the ball. It's saved underneath the basket. And Henderson plays it off to Tommy Amaker. Inside to the big kid, Martin Lent Nestle. Nothing there. They bring it back outside to Amaker and out of Dawkins. Maryland has alternated between a 2 3 zone and a 1 2 2 zone and a man to man. They're back in the 2 3 net. Amaker running one hander. Got it. Amaker's first field goal. And Duke has moved to within five. It's 17 to 12. Winner of this game meets Georgia Tech in a semifinal encounter game one here tomorrow afternoon and of course two games still to come tonight North Carolina Wake Forest in the opening game there's a shot by Branch and Adrian Branch having a good first chance Duke in the 2-3 zone with Nestle in the game I don't think coach Josefsky feels that Nestle can guard anybody from Maryland down on the court and they've given up some open jumpers Henderson rebound control by Maryland Turf doing an excellent job on the defensive board North Carolina State Clemson will wrap up this round of four quarterfinal games here at the Omni in Atlanta. 19-12, Maryland in front, just over 12 minutes to go. Long jumper by Branch. I'll tell you what, Marty, if Duke is going to let Adrian Branch get off and get started, and he obviously is, they're in a world of trouble this afternoon. Dan, you talked about the importance from Maryland's perspective of getting a good game out of Adrian Branch, unless he's getting exactly that. Dawkins misses. Branch could not run down the long rebound. Amaker from 14. There's Dawkins. And it's finally tipped in. Outstanding work by Duke underneath on their offensive board as Dawkins got the tip in. It's really the first sign of life we've seen from the Duke Blue Devils, Marty. They really stayed after it on the board. Dawkins, from his guard position, is an excellent offensive rebound. A couple of Mike Krzyzewski's main men getting ready to come back in. Here's the back door. Baxter, he tried to force a pass inside. He'll advise. What a great play by Lenny Bias to not only knock out the pass, but get it back in bounds. Jones misses. Amaker rebounds for Duke. Mark Gallery and Jay Phillips will check in a moment. Now, it's against Lewis, and they pin that baby between the iron and the glass. Now, that's really what you call pinning the ball on the board, Mark. So the substitutions come on for the Duke Blue Devils. Jay Billis, Mark Gallery, and Kevin Strickland, the freshman from Mount Airy, North Carolina, is in the lineup. Tommy Amaker sits down along with Martin Nestle. And Keith Gatlin has come back for the Maryland Terrapins. On the line, Dawkins. He'll shoot two. Missed that one, Marty, but Duke was able to play in transition for really the first time today on that series. Maryland, I don't think, can play in transition with Duke because that'll create too many openings for Dawkins. Dawkins is three out of four from the line. He gets his fifth point. 22 to 14, an eight-point advantage for Maryland with exactly 11 minutes to go in the half. Strickland in, Garden Branch now. Duke is back in the middle. A little bit too high, even for Lenny Bias. Got it, Marty. He almost had the ball. There's a loose ball. Looked like Dawkins pushed off. No foul. He comes right back. This is the slam. And a technical foul is going to be assessed against Jay Billis for hanging on the iron. There's an awful tough dunk try by Jay Billis. We'll get a look here. Johnny Dawkins on the fast break. Adrian Branch and Lenny Bias doing a nice job. They nearly get it. But now Duke has a three-on-one. The ball goes to Billis. You notice he actually has to take a real long stride to the basket, and he is not what you would call a great leaper. And that long stride made it so he couldn't get all the way there. Bias throws in his seventh point. Maryland will have possession, leading by seven at 22-15. But even though he got a technical on that morning, it has to be a good sign for Mike Krzyzewski. The Blue Devils have started to play a little bit in transition. Gatlin, Lewis, Branch. Tom Speedy Jones and Lenny Bias to line up right now for the Maryland Terrapins. They backdoor it and the pass to Ryan out of bounds. He's headed for Branch and it looked like Adrian had clear sailing to the basket had the pass been there. I think that he saw Mark Allery coming out of the corner of his eye, Marty, and he took his eye off the ball, so you have to credit that to some good Duke defense. Jump shot by Henderson. David Henderson. 
Thompson, second field goal off the bench. And Duke is now to within five at 22-17. Damager out of the game. Strickland's a little bit bigger than Dawkins. Matches up against Branch. Now there's a switch and Dawkins is back on. Maryland still shooting extremely well. Duke has yet to really put it together. Pass inside, turning, hooking, hitting. Lewis did it again. He had a three-point play earlier in the game, and he'll have the opportunity of getting another one as Jay Billis picks up his first foul. Get to see some good ball movement by Maryland. Bias. Nice pass inside to Lewis. He did a nice job getting inside position against Jay Billis. It didn't look like much of a foul, but that's the kind of a foul that an official can call. Billis goes out. He's been replaced by Dan Mahar, and Adrian Branch will get a blow on the Maryland bench. Jeff Atkins, the senior veteran from Martinsville, Virginia, has come in, and that is significant, his presence in the Maryland lineup. He had two great games this season against the Duke Blue Devils of 16 and 14 points apiece. He's trying to alley open inside. Henderson, it's out of bounds. Maryland ball. Marty, I don't think I've ever seen so many bad alley-oop passes in one game. You get a look at Mike Krzyzewski. He's got to be concerned. His team is standing around on offense, and for the most part, they're standing around on defense, and they cannot afford to get too far behind the Maryland Terrapin. Well, they came off their worst shooting game of the season, only 33% against North Carolina. Bad pass right to Johnny Dawkins. He does what he's supposed to do. And that was created by some defensive pressure. They came out and trapped. They made Maryland pick up the dribble. Atkins was really in a tough bind. This is better pressure by Duke. 25 to 19, Maryland stops and pops. Lewis having an outstanding first half of basketball. Averaging only six points a game. He's already had three field goals and a couple of free throws. Kevin Strickland down speeding inside. Henderson turns and would not have counted had it gone. Dan Woolridge blows the whistle and calls a personal foul against Tom Jones. That's his second. So five team fouls against Maryland is... Tommy Amaker checks back into the Duke lineup to replace David Henderson. Only 33% against North Carolina in a Duke loss at Cameron last weekend. Still in all, this Duke club has been an outstanding shooting team over the course of the season, just over 53%. But not doing it here today. Inside, Allery. Nice move by Allery. Once again, doesn't seem to make any difference what defense Maryland is in. The middle is open, and Duke with a couple passes and some patience is fine. And that the Blue Devils' problem is on this end of the court right here. Lenny Bias lets it fly. He throws up an air ball, but somebody might have gotten a hand on it. I don't know that Allery got his hand on the ball. I think he got Bias a light of fire under a somewhat lethargic Duke basketball team and he's doing a job. 27 Maryland, 23 Duke as lefty rises up off the Terrapin bench and gives a timeout signal. Eight minutes and 27 seconds to go in the first half here in Atlanta. Duke on the comeback, trailing Maryland by four. Seven seconds to go here in the first half of game two of the quarterfinal round of the ACC with Dan Bonner. I'm Marty Brenneman. Maryland leading by four points and Duke showing some signs, Dan. They are. They got themselves in a hole early in the game. You get a look at Coach Lefty Drizel. You know, I think that sweater is a little bit too small for him, Marty. If he's going to wear those things, he's got to wear the right size. But uh, Duke <laughs> dug himself a little hole early in the game because they weren't playing very hard. They seem to have picked up their tempo defensively the last couple of minutes. And in picking up that tempo defensively, they've been able to get down and get some easy shots on offense. Johnny Dawkins, who's from the Washington, D.C. area, has averaged over his career 23 points a game against the Terps, already has nine today, so he looks like he's going to be a big factor again. Duke eighth in the NCAA nationally in field goal shooting at 53.2, and uh, they have really come on strong in the last few minutes to get that game percentage up at 50 percent. Lenny Pius made away no. Rebound, Tommy Amaker, Duke. Good they defense. Pulled within two. Good defense. Amaker says, why not? And why not indeed? His second hoop, 27-25. Marty, you can just sit here and feel the Duke Blue Devils picking up their intensity bit by bit. Keith Gallon looks and plays to Adrian Branch and Paul Hausman with a whistle and a foul call off the ball. Some wow. fighting underneath the basket. It's going against Mark Gallery. And that's his second personal foul. 
So five team fouls apiece against these two clubs. 21-6 during the year. Maryland won more games than any club in the Atlantic Coast Conference. They played more. The Terrapins won 23 and lost 10. Mike Krzyzewski talking with official Dan Woolrich. Remember, stay tuned at the end of the game. We'll be picking a Holly Farm player of the game from each school. Led by us, pinned into the corner by Dan Bahar. Getting some defensive help from Dawkins. Ball knocked away. Bahar came up with it. Once again, another good defensive series for the Blue Jays. Amaker throws it up and in. It has been Johnny Dawkins. It has been Tommy Amaker. And it's been the Duke defense, Marty. 27-27 tie with 7-18 to go in the first half. Adrian Branch lost it on the dribble. Here comes Dawkins in a foot race with Gatlin. Dawkins wins emphatically so. Dawkins has 11. He is such a great player in the open court. Maryland has suddenly lost it. Their offense doesn't seem to have the continuity that it did earlier in the game. Duke leads by two. Cross court from Gatlin to Branch and the shot. And nothing but blue jerseys inside as the little guy Amaker claims another rebound. And Dawkins is fouled as he goes to the hoop. Speedy Jones and Jeff Baxter come back for Maryland. Keith Gatlin and Jeff Atkins sits down. Now you get a look at the Duke's fast break. Great pass by Tommy Amaker, but you can see Johnny Dawkins catching the ball in full stride on the excellent pass, then penetrates into three players from Maryland. Somebody's got to step in and make him stop. Jeff yeah, Atkins was charged with the foul, and that's the man who Lefty Drizel was delivering his comments to. Atkins get a look there on the bench. He sits out. Baxter is in. I think they're concerned that they want to get a little bit more quickness on Johnny Dawkins. This is for the second time in five tries. He's been an excellent tournament player for Duke. An average of 18.3 points per game in tourney competition. Mark of an outstanding talent to get it done under pressure. And Johnny Dawkins can do that. 30-27. Duke's lead now stands at three. Six minutes and 40 seconds remaining, first half. And they have outscored Maryland 22 to 11 since that timeout by Mike Krzyzewski when the score was 16 to 8. Talked about Amaker's ability to rebound here today. He's already claimed five, and you're talking about a six-foot guard. So he can make things happen inside when he's not shooting, as well as outside when he's pouring at home. the ball. He's matched up against Dawkins and Maryland can't find And defense. Gives Duke the ball back. It is Dawkins to Mahar. And the Canadian slams it through. 32-27 and the Blue Devils are on a 13 to nothing run. Maryland now appears to be the team standing around on offense. Baxter Brand looked to bias. Mahar was overplaying it. I think Maryland needs to go back to what they were doing earlier in the game, and that's trying to get the ball to Bias and Adrian Grant inside. Here's a long jump shot by Bias. No good. Rebound. Derek Lewis had position inside, and the freshman Strickland got him. Strickland matched up against Lewis on a switch. Lewis is such an effective inside player, even though he's only 6 feet 7. A tough afternoon. Mahar has had the better of it so far. Bias trying to get the ball. Again, he's nowhere near the basket on that particular sequence, and Bias has to be closer to the basket than that. Jeff Baxter inbounds to the branch. 32-27. The Blue Devils over the Terrapins. Five and a half minutes showing in the clock. The winner of this game meets Georgia Tech tomorrow. The man of Bobby Crimmins open this tourney with a 55-48 victory over the University of Virginia, but it could have been a costly win indeed for Georgia Tech. They lost their fine freshman, Wayne Farrell, and the question is the extent of the injury that he suffered in the first half to his leg. Duke in a 2-3 zone. Grant up with a big, big bucket for his club. He now has scored 10 points and is 32-29. That is a first Maryland basket in over four minutes. I was going to say, Marty, that was an awfully long drought for the Terrapins. They're back in the 2-3 zone. They've got to do a better job cutting off the inside. Dawkins trying to get the inside. 
drive, stops, pulls up, throws up the jump shot. Strong rebound by Lenny Bias. Well, he pushed the elevator for a higher floor than anybody else out there. My goodness, to see a play. Some fine talent on the floor here at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. I simply don't understand why Len Bias is standing out there trying to pass the ball. So he needs to switch around. Somebody needs to pass it from out there into him inside. And he has been playing out there on that wing for quite a while now. Manager plays to Henderson. Made it down and open, but also found some trouble. Finally got it off to Dawkins and out of Strickland. And he scrambled like crazy, Henderson did, trying to roll and crawl and do everything he could to get out of the lane so he wouldn't have three seconds called against him. Time on the shot clock, 12 seconds, as Henderson put it up right in the face of Jones. Got it blocked, throws up a prayer. And through the foul, lefty a little bit upset. Jones made a nice play to come over and block the shot by Henderson, but watch this. Henderson cuts in the middle. You can run a truck through there. Jones makes a nice block. Then Duke comes up with the loose ball. Foul number two against Adrian Branch, and with three minutes and 43 seconds to go in the half, that puts Duke in the bonus situation. Anderson will shoot him his first time at the free throw line and has not been a good free throw shooter. 61.7%. The numbers on this junior from Drury, North Carolina. Henderson's a much better free throw shooter when the game's on the line, Mark. That really is a hard shot up to the That was a nice shot. A little bit better touch that time to split the two. 3-4-3, three, three, time to go in the half, and the score. Maryland trailing Duke, 33-29. We'll be back to Atlanta right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, the new 1985 Colts from Japan. Colts represent automotive quality. Like the economical Colts three door, the stylish new four door. how things can change very very quickly for one club to the next Maryland came out with much the better of it early all of a sudden Duke got things going and right now it's all Duke Duke picked up their defensive intensity and that caused their offensive flow to be better they got into the transition game have gotten some easy shots Maryland on defense is playing zone in that zone they look like they're standing around and oftentimes that can make you lackadaisical on offense as well now the turnover is uh, six by Maryland, leading to eight Duke points, and the Blue Devils almost forced another one with good defense from Henderson and Abaker, but Maryland keeps possession. They've got Baxter, they've got Branch, Jones, Lewis, and Bias. Working a two-man game with Bias and Branch on this side of the court. Nothing there at the moment. Well, bad pass, and good defense by David Henderson. Henderson anticipated very well where Adrian Branch was going to throw the ball. Here's Dawkins. There's just not very much pressure defensively for the Maryland Terrapins. 14 points for Johnny Dawkins. It has been a situation this season that Maryland has simply not found a defense for him. Jeff Baxter with a hoop for the Terps. He had 30 and 20 in the two regular season matchups and already with 14 today, Johnny Dawkins. It's 35-31 due. Maryland back in their zone defense. Lewis trying to fill up the middle a little bit more than he has earlier. But that's been the area that's open. Here's Amaker. Runs into Baxter. Plays off to Allery. A relatively quiet first half for Allery. Dawkins finds him inside, but Allery was unable to make the initial catch. Got it back, however, and took it up strong. You know, one other thing that's different about this game, Marty, is the crowd is very, very quiet. As opposed to the first game between He's really had a very good first half. Uh, maybe he's tired of hearing this rookie of the year, whether it be Mel Kennedy or Dwayne Farrell. Lewis 
perfect. Four out of four from the floor. 37-33. Duke's lead fluctuating from four to six. Long jumper missed by Allery. Rebounded by Brand. Merrill was in a man-to-man -man defense that time. Baxter runs it out of trouble. As Amateur Hawks him step for step. In it goes to Bias. Head faking. Now putting it up. Did not get the roll, but the ball was tipped in by, you guessed it, Derek Lewis. I think he had some help from Jay Billis on that particular shot. They'll give the basket to Lewis. Maryland is not really looking for Len Bias, and he's so anxious when he catches the ball, he's taking some bad shots, and that was one. 37-35 with a minute 10 on the clock. Dawkins double pumps it up and in. Quite an acrobatic move by Johnny Dawkins. And that's three fouls on Adrian Branch. This is why Maryland has a tough time playing man against Duke. Dawkins with a great first step around Branch, then is able to penetrate through the, the defense. That's just a great play. Well, a critical third foul against Adrian Branch will herald his ouster for the final 108 of this half. Jeff Atkins replaces him in the Maryland lineup, while Kevin Strickland has come back for Duke, along with Dan Mahar. Dawkins, six for ten from the field in this first half, and four out of six from the free throw line for 16 points. And make it 17. Maybe Lefty should have worn a gray sweater or something. I think it might be the Maryland Red that turns Johnny Dawkins on. He's having another great game against the Turks. 40-35. Duke with a five-point lead under a minute to go. Gatlin swings it around to Jeff Atkins. Duke in a 2-3 zone. They've shown this defense a couple of times today, just sort of to change things up, give Maryland something different to look at. And now the guards playing catch outside. They work it inside to Tom Jones, and he turns and hits a jump shot. His first field goal, three-point separation, 40-37, the Blue Devils in front. Good ball movement by Maryland, even though they weren't passing the ball down to the wings, their inside guys were cutting through the zone during that passing out front, and that moved the zone enough. The shot clock is dark. There are 15 seconds to go in the half. Maryland in a man-to-man. Johnny -man. Amico with a time-consuming dribble. Now plays the Dawkins, cutting across the key. He hooked up a wild shot. There's Phillips. He shoots, he hits. The basket will probably count. As Paul Hausman blew the whistle and pointed an accusing figure at Lenny Bias. Jay Billis crashing into you is why Lenny Bias is down so hard. Dawkins, again, penetrates into the middle. His shot is very hard, even though Bias had good position. Oh, my goodness, Derek Lewis went down hard, too. Even though Bias had good position against uh, Jay Billis, the shot rebounded out so hard that Billis ended up with the ball. Derek Lewis looks to be okay, although Lefty's taking him out and replacing him in the front line with the 6'8 sophomore Terry Long, native of Glen Allen, Virginia. Here's Billis. And a three-point play for Duke with four seconds to go and a whistle. The Maryland has a play for this. There, if I saw him practicing it yesterday. It was if they tried, they'd throw the ball all the way down the court and let Len Bias jump up and grab. Jeff Baxter came off the bench with four seconds on the clock. Here's Gatlin running the line, heaving a pass down the floor, deflected away. Dawkins kept it in the air, and now will play to Phillips. He did not get off the shot in time. Now the Duke Blue Devils, after a slow start, have come back strong, leading Maryland here at the break, 43-37. Dan going to the dressing room with a lot of momentum. They sure are. They started off very slowly. They did not play very hard early in the game, but they started Mike Krzyzewski calling a key timeout, making some key substitutions, and gradually got his team off square one. And once they started playing in the transition games with Johnny Dawkins leading the way, they've been tough for the Terrapins. 43-37, Duke in front. Let's go down to Paul Cameron in the ACC Sports Center. Paul? Well, Marty, and you, you and Dan said it well. What a teeter-totter first half we saw as the Maryland Terrapins relied on their big man. Manny Bias, Adrian Branch in there, but what a first half that Derek Lewis, the freshman, had as Maryland went out to a nine-point lead. Duke came right back, capitalizing on the turnovers. The guards of Dawkins and Amica are doing very well. Coming up at halftime, stay tuned. We'll go back to a game paid five years ago between these two games, these two teams, Maryland and Duke for the 1980 championship. We'll also look at Dan Mahar. All coming your way as the ACC Sports Center continues after these messages. Paul 
Gamut live in Atlanta from the ACC Sports Center. At halftime, Duke has a six-point lead over Maryland. This game reminds me a lot of last year's championship game up in Greensboro. Of course, Maryland won that one. But it also reminds me of a game played five years ago, one of the all-time great ACC championship games between Duke and Maryland. Here's our one for the books feature and Steve Martin. Today on One for the Books, we take you back to March 1, 1980, to the ACC Finals between Maryland and Duke. It looked for a while like the Terrapins would give Lefty Drizel his first ACC title, behind great individual performances from Buck Williams, who scored 14 points in the Finals, and Greg Manning, who also chipped in with 14. Albert King, who capped off a great ACC tournament with 27 points against the Blue Devils. Those three helped Maryland to a four-point halftime lead. But Duke made a second-half rally behind Gene Banks, who led Duke with 21, and Vince Taylor with 19. Taylor's steal and bucket put Duke within one with less than a minute to go. got it back, and Taylor tried it again. Denard keeps it alive before Mike Jemensky finally tips it in with five seconds to go. Still time for the Terps. Duke sets its defense, knowing it's likely going to go to King. Even with the defense collapsing around him, he still turns for a good shot, but it just won't fall. runs out and the celebration is on for the Blue Devils. It's the sixth ACC title for Duke, their second in three years. And after Gene Banks and Mike Jemensky were named to the All-ACC Tournament team, Albert King receives the Everett Case Award as the most valuable player in the tournament. He's the only player in tournament history from the losing team to win the award, while the Blue Devils get the biggest honor cutting down the nets, celebrating the 1980 ACC championship that was won for the books. And it's great to see those players from that game now in the NBA ranks, great professionals like Gene Banks and Jeminski and also Buck Williams. Of course, Duke used that emotional lift to go on just one game short of the final four that year. The ACC Sports Center will continue after these messages from Natural Life. Halftime here in Atlanta. It is Duke leading University of Maryland, 43 to 37. And in the first half, we saw some isolation shots of Dan Mahar playing his physical brand of defense against Lenny Bias of Maryland. Danny Mahar, of course, from the land of the Maple Leafs. And Brenda Hughes of the ACC Sports Center reports that Danny Mahar, also a Canadian Olympian, who found his way to Durham. I guess if you play physical, they think that you're, that's your, your, your manner and your promoter. You're supposed to be a real, you know, talk with a real raspy voice and just be a real tough guy. Yeah, but that's not the way it is. You know. Ever since Dan Mahar played his first game here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, he's been battling an image problem. Some have called him a dirty player, even the biggest faker in the league. But it really got started four years ago. Dan, you see, wasn't exactly a local boy. was a guy from Canada who played ice hockey of all things. And then there was the matter of his hair, which he felt was a bit much in the conservative South. I didn't want to have a, like a, maybe a bad image of the team come out, you know, so I just said, well, say, well, I had to give up that part of me to, for the team to develop, and so that's a part of it. And then the second part, my mother said, you look, you look terrible on TV with your long hair. You look like a drone rat. So I said, all right, Ma, I'll cut it. But for all his differences, Dan Mahar has gained respect. There was his key role on the Canadian national team, which won the gold at the World University Games. He was also a Canadian Olympian this past summer. A lot has happened in four years. Last Saturday, Dan was introduced for the final time at Duke, a moment filled with emotion. There's so many things went through my mind, you know, but I was... I was just more glad that people, you know, were finally pre appreciate me and just, you know, kind of sad that I was leaving. I wish we could have left and beat Carolina, but things weren't to work out that way. You know. He's become a crowd favorite at Cameron, the not-so-pretty player who always makes things happen. 
And if the crowd reacts otherwise, that's okay, too. But when I come out, I get so pumped up. You know, people are yelling at you, and if they're screaming and they hate you, well, that's great, because now I'm going to put a show on for you. You want something, you're giving a reaction, and uh, I'm going to get it. And now that it's tournament time, and he and his teammates are preparing for the postseason, Dan Mahar hopes folks will remember him not as a wild, mad man on the court, but simply as an honest and open guy who truly enjoys what he's doing. I think if you went up to the players, they, they would probably appreciate the way I play, you know, how hard I play. I'm not trying to hurt anyone, I'm just trying to win. to Brenda Hughes and Dan Mahar, a big jam in the first half as Maryland's comeback has the Blue Devils leading by six at halftime. Stay tuned. ACC tournament after your this message from your local stations. Special lineup tonight on WREL TV5. One score to pass along here. It's halftime and Duke is leading 43 to 37 over Maryland in the Southwest Conference this afternoon. Texas A&M a bucket at the buzzer 54 52 over the Horns Bones of Texas Christian. We've got more coming your way. Stay tuned. This 1985 Atlantic Coast Conference basketball tournament is brought to you by Natural Life, and by Piedmont Airlines, and by Subaru, and by Food Lion, and by the Jefferson Pilot Companies, and by Hardee's, in North Carolina by NCNB National Bank, in South Carolina by South Carolina National Bank, and in Virginia by Central Fidelity Bank. Now the teams are back on the floor. Halftime clock is winding down. That's it from up here. Let's go back to Dan Bonner and Marty Bredeman. Thanks again, Paul. This reminder at the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting an outstanding player from each team as a Holly Farms player of the game. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed to the institutions under a conference-approved plan in the names of these two players. At the end of the season, each player winning the Player of the Game Award will receive a plaque from Holly Farms recognizing this honor. 43-37, Duke leading the Maryland Terrapins, and uh, as we get set to take a look at the Hardys' halftime stats, I guess Maryland has to figure what the heck you got to do, Dan. You shoot almost 61%. You go into the dressing room, down a half dozen. Duke nearly shot as well. I think it's not necessarily a product of great offensive play as much as good offensive play with some lackadaisical defense. Uh, Maryland, toward the end of the second half, was or end of the first half, was doing some standing around on defense. Duke, at the beginning of the game, was very flat. Derek Lewis with a great first half for the Maryland Terrapins. He operated inside pretty effectively. Adrian Branch started very strongly. You see Donnie, Johnny Dawkins just able to dominate the Maryland guards. He has indeed been unconscious in the first 20 minutes. Interesting lineup change. Lefty Grizzell has Jeff Atkins starting the second half. He did not start the ball game. It is Duke ball. Johnny Dawkins plays off to his backline colleague, Tommy Amaker. Looks for Dawkins cutting. He gets the ball, working on Atkins, and kicks it back outside. Here is Allery getting open inside. Derek Lewis trying to overplay him, and a good pass sprung Allery free. Good ball movement by the Duke Blue Devils. Now, the person who's out of the game for Maryland is Speedy Jones, so Adrian Branch is inside. He's going to play a forward position now. 45-37, Duke's biggest lead of eight points. The second half just underway. Here's Lynn Bias out of the top of the key with the basketball again him as Lenny gives it up and gets it right back. In that two-man game that he's trying to work with Adrian Branch, when he throws the ball inside to Adrian, he needs to cut to the basket. He can't stand out there. He's not doing it. Here's Branch playing to Atkins. He finds Lewis open at the free throw line. They're going to give him that shot. And this just happens to be one of those days for Derek Lewis. 14 points for Lewis now. He continues to play well. 45-39 Blue Devils. Maryland has started the second half in a man-to-man -man defense. They alternated between the man and the zone in the first half. Gallery plays inside Mahar. And I think that's on Adrian Branch. That's number four on Branch. Four personal fouls on Adrian Branch, who had ten in the first half. If you take 
to look at it again. Didn't really get it. The foul was called just before you could see Dan Mahar come into the picture. Adrian Branch was hanging on as Mahar was battling for position, and that's a big blow to the Maryland Terrapins. And Speedy Jones comes off the bench to replace the foul plagued Adrian Branch. He goes out with 18.45 to go in the game. Danny Mahar hits the fadeaway bank shot. Great cut by Mahar. He blew through the lane, beat Lewis to the spot, and was in receipt of an excellent pass. Excellent piece done by Brenda Hughes. You saw it in halftime on Dan Mahar, finishing out a fine career at Duke. Native Canadian, Atkins Lewis, and Keith Gatlin works an advance pass right into the hands of Mahar. He leads Dawkins. Atkins tries to catch him. It's a layup. Bad mistake by Johnny Dawkins. Atkins with some great hustle got back and made Johnny Dawkins actually shoot a bad shot. Now here's Bias. He had Mahar. He had good position, but they didn't get the ball to him in time. And by the time they did, Mahar was able to steal it. Atkins made Dawkins change the shot, and then Dawkins committed the foul. First foul on Johnny Dawkins. That's something Mike Krzyzewski does not have to worry about. And this is going to be a foul against Jay Phillips. And that's his second. He was suddenly taking on a bit more physical of its own. Mike Krzyzewski up shouting encouragement for the Blue Devils. Well, we really expected to see more of it in the first half, especially involving Dan Mahar and Len Bias, the way they won at each other during the regular season. Here's Lewis with the bank shot. A little bit too strong. Rebounded by Allery and Duke. Good blockout by Duke. There was only blue shirts around the ball that time. Duke leads by eight. Maryland really has to do something to try to change the tempo of the game. Dawkins. Picked right up where he left off in the first half. Johnny Dawkins, 19 big ones. And Duke has opened itself up some daylight. Leading by 10 at 49-39. When Tom Cram almost called a technical on Mike Krzyzewski. He ran right in front of us and turned around and shouted a couple things. And Coach K. Speedy Jones looking inside. Gatlin was there, no pass. Lewis and now Atkins. Jeff starts to move, and Dawkins checked him in fouling. No, Johnny Dawkins picks up two quick fouls for Duke. Dan Lamar is doing a great job against Len Bias. That matchup is really something to behold. Bias working very hard to get position as you get a look at those two guys. Here's the pass to Derek Lewis, and now to Atkins. He drives, he shovels, and it falls away. And the foul on Atkins. Atkins, that was a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. He missed the shot, and Mahar just came down right in front of him. And I guess the temptation of the ball right there was too much to pass up. And Lefty does not look very happy. Lefty might have to turn that sweater into a fire sale or something, the way <laughs> things are going right now for his Terps. 49-39. They're down by 10. You know, they had a nine-point lead in the first half. Allery. Allery. And since that time, there's been a 21-point Two big guns for the Duke Blue Devils have not disappointed today. Dawkins 19, Allery 12, Maryland time out here in Atlanta. 16, 41 remaining. And it is Duke by a big 12-point margin over Lefty Grizzell's Terrapins, 51-39. For Ed Ryan, who was confused by all the new unleaded gasoline claims, there's Gulf Super Unleaded, now is always the gas with guts, one of the highest octane gasolines you can buy. For Morton Mitchell, who demands the right gas. It all starts at 7 o'clock tonight. The final two games in this quarterfinal round of the ACC tournament. Wake Forest in North Carolina will kick it off at 7 o'clock, followed by the Clemson North Carolina State Encounter. That will wrap up the quarterfinal round here in the ACC and uh, paint us a picture of who will be involved in the semifinal games here tomorrow. So join us tonight at 7. Carolina Wake in the opener, Clemson NC State in the nightcap. 51 39, a lead of 12 for Duke. And Maryland is really in a world of trouble, Marty. They've got to get some offense from somebody besides Len Bias. Stay in shape! Lenny Bias has really not been hurt from a whole lot today. He scored only seven. They've got to be thankful for Derek Lewis as you look at the second half shooting. Maryland now goes back to the zone. They're in the 2-3 zone. Gallery plays inside Phillips. And the zone was not a very active zone. Maryland just sort of standing there. 
Quick pass inside. Once again, the middle wide open. Duke making it look easy. Lefty Grizzell not happy as he watches his club fall behind by 14 points. That was the way it was at the end of the first half. Duke led by six. They've opened it up to 14, and Maryland misses again. With Branch out of the game, Duke can afford to put an awful lot of pressure on the fly. Mallory. Duke trying to turn this into a lead pipe route. Leading 55 to 39. 15 minutes and 35 seconds to go. Lefty Grizzell's got Adrian Branch up and coming in the game. Tough situation for the Maryland coach to be in. Forced to come with one of his big guns with 15 and a half minutes remaining. And sending him back in with the knowledge that one more foul and he's out of here. Lefty's really got no choice, Marty. With Branch out of the game, the principal offensive threat is Bias. And Duke is able to put such pressure on Bias. That last shot, Bias shot it off the side of the board. Branch handles. Lenny Bias comes outside to get the ball. Makes his move on Mahar. Stop, turn, up, set up and in. And he's got nine. First time he scored here in the second hand. You know, it's possible that simply Branch's presence in the game will force Duke to play Bias a bit more one-on-one. -on -one. They won't be able to double-team so much, and that might get money Bias for because Maryland certainly needs something. Ball deflected out of bounds by Lewis. Of course, though, at the Duke end of the floor, Dan, I would imagine that Mike Krzyzewski would like to see his club really work toward picking up that fifth branch foul. Duke has a comfortable lead, and I don't think they're going to do anything special to try to pick up that foul. They're playing very well in sync. Oh, Albert. Tip by Phillips. Unbiased just didn't block him out, Marty. Lefty's very upset with that particular sequence. Maryland needs to take a page out of the book of the Duke Blue Devils, who were down by nine in the first half and came back with defense. And that's what the Turks have to figure out how to do. Baxter, an offensive foul. Just we're talking about defense, Tommy Amaker makes a great play. I'll tell you one thing. This Duke team we are seeing today doesn't remotely resemble the one that lost to North Carolina. That's a funny looking call right there. Amaker with good defensive pressure though is what created the situation that caused that foul call to be made. 14-3-0 to go in the game. Maryland has now turned the ball over 10 times, leading to 10 Duke points, while Duke has turned it over only four times. And they have yet to lead to a basket. We've got a foul, I believe, against Dan Mahar battling for position inside. So credit the field goal to Johnny Dawkins, sending his point total to 21. Well, there's Dan Mahar right in the center of your picture. Let's see what he does. Do you well, see what he does? I, you may, he, <laughs> maybe he threatened somebody. I don't know. That's two interesting replays on <laughs> what appeared to be non-existent foul. 59 to 41. I don't know. They did call that on Mahar, didn't they? I assume they did. They have not posted it on the big scoreboard that hangs over center court. 59-41, Blue Devils. Baxter in the lane and in heavy traffic. Ball knocked away, but right into the hands of Derek Lewis, and he runs it in. Here's, there's Maryland trying to press, and they leave Henderson all alone. There's a senseless foul committed by Derek Lewis. Although the shot was missed by Henderson, so maybe not such a senseless foul. Now, Henderson's not that good a free throw shooter, but Lefty Grizzell had obviously told his team, okay, we're going to press. And then you can see Maryland, they're all sort of standing together. They're, they're out of position. They simply weren't ready to go back into that press. Get the foul there against Lewis, and that drives the coach absolutely bananas. You say, okay, this is what we're going to do, and everybody says, all right, coach, we'll do that. And then two seconds later, they forget. So Henderson will shoot two times. Five first half points. Field, the best six man in college basketball. He averaged 23 and a half minutes per game as a non-starter during the 84-85 season. And really finished very strong with 20 points in the last three games. Maryland on the short end of a 60-43 game. Baxter to Branch. And I'll tell you, by a screaming for the ball inside, he had Mahar playing behind him. And boy, I'll tell you, they are really getting after it down low. Derek Lewis to Jeff Baxter. Now they go to Bias. He draws a convention, puts up the jumper, and got it to go down. Boy, that's a heck of a play. Glenn Bias, there were three Blue Devils around him. They're going to rule that Jay Billis hit him on the wrist. 
Look at Bias work. Bias works inside. He doesn't give up now just because he's not getting the ball. Suddenly there it is. You can see three Blue Devils around him. The Duke crowd yelling three seconds. The importance of moving without the basketball. I really think that Bias has been open a lot inside against Mahar. And the Terrapins simply haven't been getting in the ball. And you have to credit Duke's outside defense with that. The guards are not able to see Bias when he's open. We might point out Jay Billis now plays with three personal fouls. And Johnny Dawkins is fouled by Jeff Baxter. That brought Lefty Grizzell off, 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 off the bench like he was shot out of a gun, complaining that there was a turnover on that play. Carrying the ball violation as we wanted. No one in Team one. fouls all even on the left piece. Maryland down by 15 points. But despite the fact that it's been better than 13 minutes to go in the game, the Germans really not making much, if any, of an inroad to try and chop into this big Duke advantage. Maryland back to the man-to-man -man defense. They've got to play it aggressive. Henderson came up short, and there's Adrian Branch. The first good defensive sequence for Maryland in quite some time. Here's Bias pulling up and putting it in. 16 to 47. The ball thrown out of defense for one of the few times today causes some problems for Duke and they get it right back. Maryland is obviously trying to set up the full court press after a made basket. Baxter got his hand on the ball. It was ruled to go off Billis's hand and out of bounds. They call timeout with 12.40 to go. Maryland trying to mount a comeback. Still, however, trailing Duke by that 13-point spread. This exclusive ACC coverage is brought to you by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. 12 minutes, 40 seconds to go. As you look at Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski, he has to be a bit pleased with the way his club has played here today, leading Maryland by 13 at 60 to 47. We want to remind you again to stay tuned at the end of the game. We'll be picking a Holly Farms player of the game from each school. Georgia Tech won the opener of this Atlantic Coast Conference tournament earlier today, defeating Virginia 55-48, and waiting to see who their opponent will be as a result of the outcome of this one. Right now, it would certainly appear to be due. Well, Mike Krzyzewski is who called that timeout. He, Mike Krzyzewski, knows very well that the Maryland Terrapins came back from way down against the Duke Blue Devils in their first meeting of the season. He's also well aware that the Blue Devils lost a 16-point lead in the second half to NC State at Durham once this year. So this game is by no means over, and Mike Krzyzewski wanted to make sure that his team wasn't relaxing out there. Duke back in the 2-3 zone. Amaker and Dawkins very active out front. Clark Baxter, a lot of playing time here today. Works of all the bias. Right back to Speedy Jones. Right back to Lenny Bias. Turning, shooting, hit the side of the board. Second time today that's happened. Bias and Jones were much too close together. That business of throwing the ball inside and passing it back outside is fine, but not when the two players are about three feet apart. Danny Mahar says, set it up. Again, you look at the way things have gone. Six-point differential at the end of the first 20 minutes of play, and Duke has just added to it, having outscored Maryland 17-10 in the first almost nine minutes of the second half. Dawkins fires a jump shot. All kept alive and saved by Len Bias. A defensive sequence showed you one of the Terrapins' problems. Atkins and Branch, the Terrapin guards, have to play off and Dawkins because of the great quickness and therefore Amaker and Dawkins are able to get a good view of the floor and pass inside. Duke stays in the 2-3 zone. Why not? They're up 15 points. And they have played well today. Here's Bias getting by one man, Henderson, picking up some attention from Mark Gallery, but still burying one off the baseline. He's got 15, and right now, Maryland is on an 8-1 to one run. And it's funny, Lefty Drizel's happy Bias is scoring, but Bias forgot that the team was supposed to press that time, and he was in mid-court before he realized he was supposed to get back to guard the ball. Good play by David Henderson. Here's Dawkins penetrating, baseline, jumper, Bahar, no, rebound, Allery scoring. Could do 
Nothing but foul. It's the quickness of Johnny Dawkins that starts all this off, Marty. You can see him penetrate past there, get it to Mahar. That penetration caused everybody to come to Dawkins, so Allery had great position inside. Three fouls on Derek Lewis. Keith Gatlin checks in, and Jeff Baxter leaves for Maryland. Clock showing 10 minutes and 42 seconds remaining, and it's a 13-point Blue Devil lead. Allery today, well, he was a great field goal percentage shooter during the season, over 58%. Today, 8 for 11 from the floor. He has 17. 63-49, a big three-point play for the Duke Blue Devils. Duke really has this zone defense spread very, very wide. Adrian Branch. Branch has an even dozen. He has scored 12. Bias has had 15. And Maryland wants to press, but for some reason or another, Marty, they simply can't get their press organized. Gallery. Cross court to Mahar and outside of Dawkins. Maryland, uh, they've had their moments today. That is spirited play. Here's Dawkins putting it up. Got the rebound back and it knocked away. Adrian Branch puts it into the hands of Keith Gatlin. For the Terps, just under 10 minutes to go in the game. Will they be around to play tomorrow, or will they be spectators with Duke going against Georgia Tech? Well, no soon enough, the jumper misses, and an excellent rebound. Lenny Bias was all set to pick off that ball, and here comes Mr. Amaker. Tipped in by Allery. Once again, nobody's blocking Allery out. Great rebound by Amaker, and he took it right into the fast break. Maryland slow getting back on defense. 65-51, the Blue Devils. It's really tough to come back for the Terps because with Duke's quickness in the guard spot, it's very hard for Maryland to put any pressure on. Jones had a ball knocked away. Amaker leads to Dawkins. And another score for the Blue Devils at Duke University. Great hands by Amaker to, to, first of all, knock that ball away, then to control it well enough to get it ahead to Dawkins. That's a turning high for Johnny Dawkins. He had 21 last year. Or make that 22 points against Maryland in the ACC finale here, and he has now scored 23 today. 67-51. Jump shot by Branch, short. Blue Devils rebound. Henderson there. Maryland, I think, needs to be a bit more patient on offense, Marty. They've got enough time to come back in the game, but I do believe that they're going to have to take the ball inside against that zone. Well, Maryland had its run, but with eight and a half to go, Duke has started to roll again, pushing the advantage to 16 points. Blue Devils now obviously are going to try to work the clock just a little. Can't blame them for that. Amaker, no. Follow Allen. Somebody's got to block out Allen. It has been the Johnny Dawkins Park Gallery show pretty much here today, and we're not forgetting the Duke defense by and large. It has put them in a position they're in. Signal by Lefty Drizel with 8-12 remaining. And the Blue Devils on a roll. Up 18 on Maryland, 69-51. Sixty-nine, fifty-one. Duke in front of Maryland, and a uh, very, very quick timeout call by Lefty Drizel because he could see things going back toward the Duke end of the court, and that they decidedly have. Jeff, uh, Dan, a quick look at uh, the shot board that, as yeah, usual, shot. tells a story. It really tells a big story. This is Maryland down here. You can see that not only don't they have very many field goals, but there, there's not very many in this lane area. Now, as we go up to the other end of the court, Look at the Duke Blue Devils. All they're doing is shooting layups. And so it's no wonder that Maryland's down by 18 points. This is a very revealing shot board in this particular occasion. Mark Gallery, six rebounds here in the second half. He has 10 for 13 from the field today en route to a 21-point afternoon. It has not been a pleasant sight for the University of Maryland coach in his 16th year. Earlier this year, of course, picked up his 500th career victory. Branch from way outside. Now, he made that shot, Marty, but that's not the way that Maryland's going to come back in the game. We mentioned that Duke has their zone spread out very wide. The idea is to force Maryland into the outside shots, and Maryland is cooperating by taking 69-53. Mallory runs the baseline, plays to Henderson. Nice behind the back pass. That's the way to beat that trap. Well, I'll tell you what, that looked like a real good trap. Nice play by Henderson. Scoring offense for the two clubs. And at the other end, another bucket for Mr. Dawkins. You know, not to beat a dead horse, Marty, but the quickness of the Duke guards makes it very, very difficult for Maryland to press. 25 for Johnny Dawkins. Lenny Bias. A 
I'll tell you one thing. Danny Mahar was not intimidated. One iota by Bias's desire to really ram one home. Mahar challenged him and picked up a foul for his effort. Lenny Bias, he must have thought just what's going on here. He was wide open, but Mahar came over. Jeez, what a collision that was. Remember the all hard hat team, Danny Mahar. And putting Bias on the free throw line to shoot. He said he wasn't intimidated by Len Bias. Len Bias coming there with that min mill dunk. I think I'd have been pretty intimidated. Most players would have been. Danny Mahar has proven in the past that he's not. That's 16 points for Bias. He now waves Terry Long off the line, and Jeff Atkins replaces him. You know, you think about the players in the ACC, guys like Mark Price, this guy right here, Lenny Bias, Lorenzo Charles. There's so many great players in the conference. Well, you've named three of the five who made the all ACC team. Johnny Dawkins, Brad Darty to round it out. 71-55. Jeez, you're flying him. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to make that implication if that's what it appeared to be. 71-55 Duke. Henderson goes down on his own. And Atkins picks up the ball after Branch went down also. Well, that was not a picturesque defensive series for Maryland, but it certainly was effective. Neither was that. picked it up. Evan Strickland will check in along with Jay Phillips at the next opportunity for Duke. Six minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Now Duke is going to spread it out a little bit, not necessarily to try to freeze the ball. Obviously you can't in a 45 second clock. You can try to do things like this. Interesting right there. David Henderson took it to the basket and Adrian Branch was really helpless. Not even token defense, considering the fact that he has four and did not get any help. Nice move by Gatlin. That's just a tough break right there. Dawkins has Mahar. He has Henderson. He has out of bounds. <laughs> Mahar tries to tell the official. Tom Frame down there that he never touched the ball. Kevin Strickland is back along with Jay Phillips. And Billy King is also in the lineup. Freshman from Sterling, Virginia. So Mike Krzyzewski setting some folks down. Henderson, Dawkins, and Mahar to give his key people a bit of a breather. Allery on a roll, staying in. Here's Gatlin shooting. And King rebounding for Duke. Maryland, I still think, Marty, their, you know, their chances are rapidly evaporating. You're down 18 with less than six minutes to go. But I do think they have to try to go inside and know they don't have anybody better in the game to go to than Len Bias. 5.50 on the clock. Ball picked up by Bias. Two brands. Nice job by Strickland to make the man stop. And he came up short on the jump shot. And that really, in fact, all started with a defensive Kevin Strickland. More and more, it looks like it's going to be Duke and Georgia Tech in one of the semifinal games here tomorrow. With the floor spread like this, there's very little defensive help. Hawkins pulls up and shoots the bank shot. What a quick move by Amaker. Gatlin got all the way on the wrong side, and Amaker just flew by. A little touch of basketball class from Johnny Dawkins, who now has 27. The ball rattles and falls away by Atkins, and Paul Hausman apparently says that's foul number four against Jay Billis. Billis still working hard, trying to block out inside. Allery's going to come out for a rest here. He's just been handed an amazing statistic by John Madden statistician party and that is the rebounding in the second half is Duke 16 Maryland four. That, uh, that is an amazing statistic you know, neither team is a particularly strong rebounding team so in a game like this if one team or the other is going to establish total dominance of the boards then the outcome is a foregone conclusion Mike Krzyzewski coaching up a storm as Len Bias toes a free line at the other end and drops it in. I, I expect this, uh, a real close game, Marty. This is the, the furthest thing from my mind, the fact that either one of these teams would blow out the other. Well, the ability to predict accurately, especially this season in the Atlantic Coast Conference, has been uh, somewhat nil. Well, that's for sure, but this year, I think there's been fewer blowouts in games this year than ever before. 
certainly didn't expect it in a game like this with two teams that seem so evenly matched. 75-56, as Duke's lead has gone to 19 big ones with under five minutes to go. Adrian Brown pulls up with a long jump shot as Duke and Maryland continues to throw up that long bump. And Terry Long with his putback to get a basket and a time call by the officials due to an injured player, Jeff Atkins of Maryland. He's down. Looks like he hurt his ankle, Marty. He's really in pain. That was an unbelievable series. As the ball was coming off the board, we glanced to see who was going to get the rebound, and what we saw was Dan Mahar and Lynn Bias grabbing one another, throwing each other to the floor, and that's what opened long for the rebound. I did not see Atkins get hurt. Now watch, watch Mahar and Bias. Here goes the shot. Now watch these guys. We can't see it, but when the picture, when the ball comes down here, you'll see, you won't see Bias and Mahar because they've knocked one another down. And there's Long with the ball. Atkins, it looks like, just twisted his ankle trying to back out of that play. Well, he's still down and has really not moved a whole lot. Now he's going to be helped up. Lefty Grizel goes out there, and uh, Jeff Atkins being assisted to the Maryland bench with help from Lenny Bias and one of the Maryland trainers. I hope that that is one of those ankle injuries that's just very painful at the start and then goes away. He's certainly a valuable player for Maryland, and even if the Terps should lose today, they've got other games left. It is Duke basketball. It goes to Billis, and Chuck Grizzell, lefty's son, a senior, just entered the Maryland lineup, immediately called for a foul away from the basketball. That is a seven-team foul against the Terps, so Billy King goes to the other end to shoot the one-and-one. Well, that's a lonely feeling there that Lefty Giselle has right now. It's just nothing he can do. He's tried substitutions. He's tried changing defenses. He's tried everything I think a coach can try, and nothing has worked today. And here it is. I think he realizes that he's got no chance in a game that I'm sure he's coming in very comfortable about his chances. Billy King, nine now for 31 on the year from the free throw line. Well, you know, the funny thing about that is Chuck Grizzell comes in the game, fouls King, and he has the audacity to ask the referee, who me? <laughs> that was obviously what he's supposed to do coming in the game. He did it well. 76, 58. It is Duke in front, 440 to go. Luke over the branch. She drives inside, lost it, got it back, and scores it the right idea by Adrian Branch to try to penetrate inside that zone defense and create an opportunity for a three-point play. Maryland, however, has done precious little of that, and now Chuck Drizell picks up another foul away from the ball, and again, it is Billy King. Father talking to son in a not-so-pleasant manner, and whatever Lefty said has amused some of the folks sitting along press he row. He said, don't just grab him. Obviously, Chuck is in the game. He's matched up against King to try to follow him, and Duke is very cleverly keeping the ball away from King. So Chuck is trying to do what his dad told him to do and foul King. Billy was one for two just a moment ago. It appears to be pretty good strategy. thrill for you to have your son play ball. I think it would be awfully tough. That would be tough, but it would be a big thrill. 76 to 60, a 16-point lead by Duke. Adrian Branch, King didn't go for the head take. He was hammered to the floor, however, by Jay Billis, and it is going to be the early gate for the junior from Rolling Hills, California. Billis has fouled out with four minutes and nine seconds to go, and Dan Mahar will replace him. Now, to give you some idea, as Jay Billis leaves the basketball game, that Mike Krzyzewski certainly does not think this game is over. Billy King has come out. If Maryland is going to foul and get back in the game by Duke missing free throws, somebody besides Billy King is going to miss it. Mike Krzyzewski doesn't think this game is over. Do you? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. Like <laughs> Adrian Branch hits a first shot. You know, I say that. Maryland, I agree with you. Maryland, no. Maryland has cut the 20-point lead. They have a chance to cut it to 14, but I can't imagine that they can come back in the game. You left yourself a small out there, didn't you, Dan? It's always good to have an escape clause. <laughs> Branch one for two. And it'll be Duke Ball. Good steal by Adrian Branch, but he happened to get the ball while he was standing on the line. Now, Mark Allery's down. 
It has been a much more physical game here in the second half than it was in the first. And Allery. Now Mike Krzyzewski has got to be worried. Allery looks like maybe he landed on his hip. Maybe got a hip pointer. And that can be very, very serious. Is being administered to Shashevsky comes up to Paul Hausman and says, uh, "Am I permitted to go on the floor and check my injured player?" And Mr. Hausman said, "Yes." No, it looks like Allery pulled something maybe in his hip or in his back. He, that did not occur when he fell to the floor. That occurred before he fell down. If he's got some kind of a sprain there or in his back, in his hip or in his back area, that's you know that could prove possibly to the Duke Ludo. Very, very slowly. And he has had a great game. Great second half in particular. He's going to leave. You know, he's had a back problem in the past, if I'm not mistaken. He's holding his lower back as he walks to the Duke bench. So I would not imagine we'll see Mark Allery anymore today. David Henderson triggers to Johnny Dawkins. Dawkins waiting for the traffic to clear, and now we'll bring it up against Baxter. He put him right to the floor. What a backcourt to Duke has. Uh, yes. Quickness, the ability to shoot it and pass it and rebound. The guards collectively can do it all. That was a foul that went unnoticed. Bias really was trying to get it. Terry Long picks up the personal foul and stops the clock at 341. Well, the Maryland strategy now is obvious that the guy they're going to try to get is David Henderson. When Henderson had the ball previous to that particular possession by David, I thought Lynn Bias got him pretty good, but the foul wasn't called. Then Terry Long made sure as he dribbled by. So Henderson goes to the line where he's been two for four today and route to an eight-point ball game. Lefty has to worry about getting an NCAA bid, but with the number of teams expanded to 64 for the NCAA tournament this season, it's certainly he would have liked to have been able to successfully defend his ACC tourney title. Timeout with 3.41 to go. Duke 78, Maryland 61, and we'll return after this international life. Coast Conference Tournament continues from the Omni here in Atlanta. Game one at 7 o'clock, pitting Carl Tacey's Demon Deacons of Wake Forest against Dean Smith's North Carolina Tar Heels, followed by the Clemson Tigers and the North Carolina State University Wolfpack. The winners of those two games will comprise the other semifinal game tomorrow, and more and more it looks like it's going to be Duke and Georgia Tech in the first semifinal encounter here tomorrow afternoon. Here it is, 78-61 uh, Duke with 341 remaining. And we remind you this Atlantic Coast Conference basketball tournament has been brought to you in part by Mazda and the U.S. Army. Chuck Frizzell, Terry Long, the man with the ball, Jeff Baxter. Now it's Adrian Branch and Len Bias make up the Maryland Five. Frizzell started up, lost it, and got it back. Baxter puts it up. And Bias slapped it out of that. So they'll go the other way. really struggling to try to find something that's going to work on offense. They continue to shoot the ball from the outside. And the Blue Devil zone, to be perfectly honest with you, is designed to make him shoot it from the outside. So for the last few minutes, they've been playing right into the deep hand. Down the floor, ball tipped out by Terry Long. Well, when the game started, Maryland came out playing much, much better than did Duke. And uh, all of a sudden, Mike Krzyzewski took through all three of his frontline starters out of the game following a timeout, and Duke went, after they got him back in the lineup, they went on a run and uh, really have not looked back since then. Foul call is Danny Mahar's double team by Chuck Grizzell and Terry Long. Maryland using some half court trapping pressure and again I think what they're going to try to do is if they can steal the ball right away well then well and good but if not they're going to try to get the early foul and I do believe we're going to see a parade to the free throw line. So Dan Bahar steps up there where he has shot at almost 69 percent for the season and Bias is above the iron for the rebound To make 
at 78-63. And Bias has scored a total of 20 points in this game. 78-63, Duke in front. Bias has those 20 points, Marty, but I think the important thing is, is when the game was still in doubt, when the game was being decided, Duke was able to keep Lenny Bias relatively quiet. He's had 13 of his 20 here in the second half. Foul called, and this time it'll be Kevin Strickland going to the line. Really hurt the Maryland Terrapins when Adrian Branch picked up his third foul in the first half and had to sit down and then got his fourth foul very early in the second half because that enabled the Duke Blue Devils to concentrate their defense on Lenny Bias to limit his scoring opportunities. And when Branch was out of the game was when Duke really pulled away. Missed by Strickland and a foul called against David Henderson. And that's the one thing that Coach Krzyzewski is not interested in seeing, and that is fouls by his Blue Devils that will enable the Maryland Terrapins to score while the clock is stopped. The two Blue Devils under that man, Mike Krzyzewski, will move their season's record to 22 wins and six losses. With his victory over Maryland, Bias shooting right now for Lefty Drizel's club. And both clubs take the turn to the Danny Mahar, Johnny Dawkins, and another foul. This one on Jeff Baxter. So it indeed is up and down the floor. Well, it's up and down the floor, but everybody's walking up and down because we're just going from one free throw line to the other. John Dawkins will shoot him for Duke University with 226 remaining. This is the kind of game where the guys on the bench are sitting there saying, come on, coach, put me in. Dawkins, quite an afternoon. 27 points make it 28. The guys, the guys who don't play very much are always excited to look back through the ACC tournament uh, box scores and see their name in there, even though that they, you know, it's all zeros across. And he hits again. At 29 points now for Johnny Dawkins. Long jumper misses by Grizel, rebounded by Tommy Abaker. Blue Devils ought to try to keep the ball moving to avoid the foul and keep that clock running. Good job by Mahar. Abaker's got to get rid of it. And he does to David Henderson to the cutting strip. Good play by Duke. Maryland trying to foul. Duke never going to let the ball sit long enough for Duke to foul anybody. 82 to 63. Minute 53, 52, 51 remaining. Here's Len Bias getting open inside and rolling it in. Good decision by Duke not to foul. Well, Bias has scored 22, but uh, just adding the average at the moment. And Duke not able to get the ball in bounds in the prescribed five seconds. Tommy Amaker was a man on the spot, and Hausman signals it's Maryland ball. I think they got the ball in bounds, Marty, but I think that Paul Hausman ruled that Tommy Amaker was standing on the end line. So Maryland's still battling to forge what would be a miracle. There's Adrian Branch definitely laying it in, and he has scored 19 points. And an immediate Maryland timeout stops the clock with one minute and 34 seconds to go. But despite this Maryland comeback that right now has him trailing 82-67. Duke, of course, still very, very much in the driver's seat, and it's been an exceptionally big afternoon. Dan for Johnny Dawkins and Mark Allery, the two people who Mike Krzyzewski normally would expect to do the job. We said at the beginning of the game that Duke is a very good team when Johnny Dawkins and Mark Allery have good games and when Duke gets help from somebody else. Today, it's sort of been the Dawkins-Allery show all along. They both have played so very well. The Duke defense was the difference. Uh, after the first few minutes of the game where Duke was very flat on defense, they came out, they picked up the defensive pressure, they denied the passes inside to Lenny Bias, and they pulled away. And I think it's a good point that you made that Lenny Bias is scoring a lot down in this portion of the game, but the game's over. It's already been decided, and when the issue was still being decided, Duke limited Bias's opportunities with the ball. It'll look good in the newspapers tomorrow morning, but uh, despite what would appear to be an outstanding game by Len Bias, it is still going to be, more importantly, a Duke victory that will send them head-to-head -head against Georgia Tech in the first semifinal game tomorrow afternoon. A couple of big games still to come tonight at 7 Wake in North Carolina, followed by Clemson and North Carolina State. Both teams back on the floor with 94 seconds remaining in the game. 
82 Duke, 67 Maryland. David Henderson gets the ball from Paul Hausman and looks for an open man, finds it. And Johnny Dawkins is the man in control. He gets it up the floor to Henderson. And off the ball as they tiptoe down the baseline, Chuck Brazil bangs into Billy King. That's three fouls on Grizel, and three have also been called against Cherry Long. Lefty will be able to foul the cardigan sweater. Certainly hasn't helped him much today. And that really throws a monkey wrench into the strategy. Billy King is going to start making free throws. Yes, as a matter of fact, he's two. He's two for five today, two for six now, and 11 for 36 for the season. And at 18 seconds to go, 83-67 long, threw it inside. Ball was knocked around, and another foul. That foul's on Weldon Williams, and as we said, that's the last thing that Duke wants to do. Do not stop the clock, but that foul against Williams, a junior from Park Forest, Illinois, does exactly that, and Branch will shoot for the University of Maryland. Well, Williams certainly didn't mean to commit the foul, Marty, but uh, when Maryland penetrated into the zone, it created a situation where he was out of position, and that's what we've been, that's what we were saying earlier. Had Maryland maybe tried to penetrate the zone a little bit earlier, they could create a situation like that. Marty, one thing I'd like to do while we got a minute here, my mother is in a hospital in New Bern, North Carolina, and I'd just like her to know that I'm glad she's finally able to watch us on television. I hope she's getting better. We'll let go of those sentences. Two hits by Branch. And 83-69. Kevin Strickland bounces it off to David Henderson. Terry Long stalking him. He reached for him and couldn't get him. He could. Lenny Bias made contact, and that's Bias's third foul. Now, we talked about Lenny Bias. He had a big statistical game, but the fact that he wasn't an important factor while the game uh, still, the outcome was still unknown, wasn't any fault of Lenny Bias's. He really worked hard in the game. He battled Dan Mahar tooth and nail the whole time, and the, it's just a real credit to the Duke defense that they could shut him off. He's such a great player, and he did work so hard. You saw Jay Bryan, a senior from Lakewood, Colorado, coming into the Duke lineup, replacing Billy King. David Henderson drops it in for point number 84 for the Duke Blue Devils. And now Todd Anderson will come on in just a moment. So Mike Krzyzewski in the process of getting everybody in uniform some game action today and this what will be in a matter of a minute and six seconds a Duke victory in their first outing in this 85 ACC basketball tournament 85 69 a minute on the clock Baxter throws up a high bank it's rebounded by Bryant Maryland trying to take it away and Jay Bryant will walk to the other end with a chance to get his name in the scoring column picked up the personal foul. And it's not been a real good showing today for the Maryland Terrapins. On the contrary, for the Duke Blue Devils. Coach Cazell has to be very disappointed with the way his team has played today. They came in playing very good basketball, and I'm sure he thought that he was going to get a real good effort today, and he simply did not. Who gets it back? That's, that's the Maryland game in capsule right there. Lenny Bias trying to pass it to Adrian Branch in there. They just did it again. He lost the ball. And Johnny Dawkins lost it out of bounds. Now, if we keep this up, we're not going to have anybody in here watching the game very much longer. The thing that's got to be of some concern to Mike Krzyzewski now is the well-being of his outstanding frontliner, Mark Allery, who left the lineup with what appeared to be a lower back injury and does not come back. Branch misses. Rebounded by Weldon Williams and Traveler. And you mentioned earlier, Marty, that Georgia Tech is a little bit concerned about their prospects as well as their fine freshman, Dwayne Farrell, went down with some ligament damage in his knee, and we'll just have to wait and see how serious that is. So it's possible we've had two real good players hurt here in the first round. The roll was not there for Lenny Bias, but he got it back. And this is again. 
ball kept alive. Quite a flurry of activity underneath the basket that time in the final few seconds of this game with only 24 remaining. It's amazing that Lenny Bias is in there. The game's obviously over, but he's still working real, real hard. How about Johnny Dawkins? Dawkins still in there, despite the fact that Duke had this one sewn up quite some time ago. Well, Johnny Dawkins leaves, and Billy King comes back. Chuck Rizal will shoot him, so Dawkins leaves with 27 points. And quite a showing here today for the junior from Washington, D.C. All he did was... Well, do what he did during the regular season against uh, Maryland. We mentioned earlier he had a total of 50 points in the two games, 30 and 20, and today he comes in with a total of 27. So a virtuoso performance for Johnny Dawkins. I think Lefty Drizel is going to be happy when Dawkins graduates. I would think so. You saw Brian Palmer, a sophomore from Shrewsbury, Pennsylvania, and Chuck Drizel hit both free throws to make it 85-71. John Jones comes back for the University of Maryland and Len Bias leaves. Well, Bias finishes with 22 points. And a foul ball against Jones. That will send Williams to the free throw line with 20 seconds to go. A game like this gets to be excruciating down at the end. I'm sure that... Uh, Everybody would like to see it be over. I'm sure there's a better word for it than that, but it escapes me at the moment. <laughs> Here's Williams shooting and hitting. For the kids, though, who are in the game playing now, it really is a big thrill to be in the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament to get an opportunity to play. I speak from experience when I talk about that. Well, you said that. I didn't. Let the record show. You were thinking it, though. Right, thank you. Here's Keith Gatlin pulling it up. He rattles the irons for his third field goal. And again, the pressure applied by Maryland, resulting in the foul against Jeff Baxter. That's all for Baxter. He fouls out with a field goal and two points. Baxter came in the game to try to give the Terrapins some help against the, the Blue Devils' quickness, and he just wasn't up to the task. Ed Woods comes into the Maryland lineup now for the foul out Jeff Baxter. And Kevin Strickland with a field goal. He's 0 for 1 from the free throw line, and he's going to shoot him for Duke. Trying to round out to Duke, scoring with only eight seconds to go. Missed his shot, rebounded by Maryland. Midcourt pass to Chuck Drizel. Two seconds, one second. Shot rejected, and that is that. The Duke Blue Devils kick things into gear, and boy, did they ever, as they roll to a convincing 86-73 victory over the Maryland Terrapins, thereby moving into the semifinal round here tomorrow afternoon against Georgia Tech. And uh, Dan, impressive showing after the slow beginning by the uh, Duke Blue Devils. And as you talk about the matchup tomorrow, questions, of course, concerning one, Wayne Farrell for Georgia Tech, two, Mark Allery for Duke University. That's right. Georgia Tech does not have a great deal of depth, so to lose anyone, particularly a starter who's averaging in double figures like Farrell, is really, you know, would really hurt them. And Mark Allery is such a key part of the Duke offense. If he cannot play at all tomorrow or if he's hindered at all tomorrow, then that really is a disadvantage for Duke. As you mentioned, a very disappointing loss for Lefty Drizel. This club was playing extremely well at the end of the season. They tried to come in here to defend their uh, tournament championship, and they really did not play well at all today. No, they didn't. They started out well, but they sort of, and as opposed to Duke, which started flat and then rose up, Maryland seemed to start a little bit higher pitch and then flatten out as the game went on. So it was really a, a contrast. Maryland started out very quickly, got that 21 to 12 lead, and then after that it was all Duke. Key in the game, of course, was uh, replacing the three front liners and then getting them back in there, and from that point on, Duke just rolled. Let's go now to Paul Cameron in the ACC Sports Center. Okay, Marty, looks like uh, Maryland Lefty Giselle will have to wait till Sunday on television to find out where they will be seated in the upcoming NCAA tournament. By the way, uh, tomorrow's semifinal game starts at 1.30. Georgia Tech and Duke, that's a rematch of last year's first-round game, won by Duke in overtime, a great shot by sophomore Tommy Amaker. We've got more to come from Atlanta, Georgia, after this.
Well, Cameron, back live in Atlanta's Omni for the ACC Sports Center, where Duke is capped off a big win over Maryland in the first round. And the D.C. connection of Tommy Amaker and Johnny Dawkins, both from the immediate area, have done just a number on Maryland this afternoon. Let's go to Marty Brenneman, who's got some comments. Freshman Derek Lewis for the University of Maryland, 16 points on the strength of 7 of 10 shooting. Holly Parms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed to the institutions under a conference-approved plan in the names of these two players. At the end of the season, each player will receive a plaque from Holly Parms recognizing this honor. Paul, back to you. Well, Marty, of course, Johnny Dawkins out of Mackin High, the Catholic school in Washington, D.C., but Tommy Amaker is out of... Now, they did so in this matter. Georgia Tech, the top seed, defeated Virginia 55-48 in the process. Georgia...